Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today I will make another track from scratch using Ardor and Zenatsu FX, namely Zenfusion, the new interface that has been fully open sourced. So if you are brave, you can build it on your own. I've noticed that a lot of you seem to want to see more raw workflow of an artist working within Ardor because looks like you still don't believe it can do things. <laughs> so I'm gonna prove it to you. So by the end of this video, we'll have something that sounds like this. All right, let's get it on. Here's my Ardor session, brand new, nothing's in it right yet. So I'm going to right click, add MIDI tracks, I want to add eight MIDI tracks, call them Zin. And I have my instrument set to Zin and SubFX. I have two on the list. One is Zin Fusion, the other one is the old interface. And I want the new one, of course, because why would I want the old one when I have new one? There we are. I, I think I'm gonna start with an arpeggio. I'm gonna make this track bigger so I can have my sweet piano roll here. I'm gonna make some space. I'm gonna make sure I see show measure lines right. Also I'm gonna tap some tempo first. Well, funny. I've tapped almost exactly what was there already. And I'm gonna just use the first um I need a grid, definitely I need a grid. I'm gonna beat by two. Let's start maybe with G. I want this shorter. I want it actually, you know, uh, yeah, I want it to be beats by four, actually. I'm gonna just truncate this this region. Oh, okay, I have no grid for, I'm gonna do this. Oh, I have beats by 20, that's no good. Beats by four. All right. I'm gonna do T for time stretch. I'm just gonna make this two times shorter. Oh yeah, this is the tempo I want. Now I'm gonna hit E to have, no, I'm gonna hit G again to change the, the length of this. I'm gonna... Okay. This is our phrase. Let's duplicate it, Alt D. I'm gonna do it four times. I think I want to change the se the the second pair, so it's gonna be a bit different. Let's see what happens if I just loop this. All right, like this, let's duplicate the whole thing. This phrase could be kind of an intro. Yeah, we could have this kind of like a complex tro, maybe, I don't know. I don't really know what complex tro is. Let's add, I'm gonna call this ARP. Let's add some tone to this. Mm. So I'm just gonna loop the thing in the background. I wanna make this a pluck. So let's go make this saw wave. Okay. 
We could actually automate this stuff and make... I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go learn. And now I have this thingy here. I'm gonna call this attack. Alright. And now I'm just gonna add processor automation slot one and because I have assigned this to slot one, I can make an automation track for this. I can go play. Sweet. Uh, I think I, oh, okay, I had two, both points selected. I just want one. And then I just want to jump back to the short one again. Maybe not this one. And then I just want to go back. Sweet. Um, I think I want to maybe distort this a bit. Let's go back to uh, sense of effects. Insert a distortion. This is the part effects. Lopez filter, Hypus filter, and dry wet. Uh, I definitely want reverb. I think I'm gonna add a pad underneath to reinforce this ambient feeling because that reverb gives us a nice ambientish filler in the background and I like this, I would like to add more of that. Uh, I think we should do something else maybe to automate more parameters so it's not so simple. We could automate that, I guess. Let's do it. Learn. Now I should have this in slot two. Yep. Let's do it. Reverb. Whoa. Ah, oh, I pressed home and order got that as a, all right. Reverb as a comment to, oh, what can I type R? All right, shift. R. Okay, caps lock, reverb. Uh, I don't, it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's add another automation track. Slot, second slot. We can also record this, but it's gonna be a bit harder, I guess, to, um, to then really, I'm gonna save this session. Control S, it's good. I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do a contrast thing. I'm gonna start with bigger, longer reverb, but shorter sound, and I'm gonna do this, the opposite. So it's gonna be like balancing the two. With Alt, I can escape the grid. All righty. Yeah, so it's, oh, I think this is too big of a reverb. It's super, super huge. Actually, I'm surprised that our Zenit Sub Effects handles this uh, dynamic reverb size so well. There's no clicking. Normally, when you try to do something like that with a plugin, it it often clicks because these parameters are not not ready to be automated. At least that's the experience I had with various 
plans. Alrighty, sweetie. Uh, I think I would like to counter this again. So it's. I want to make like a burst of reverb, actually, like make it very long for a short period of time, and then just cut it off and see what happens. Does it sound good? Let's see. X. Yeah. Same thing I want to do here, just for one maybe one maybe note, maybe maybe two. Oh. I want to make it a long, long thing. Okay, it's so short you can't even hear the change. Let's do it like that. All right, interesting things happening. So this is our ARP. Now, if I want to duplicate this with automation, uh, I'm going to go with region R, clicking R key. I'm going to select this, then I'm going to go control and select this and this, and I'm going to go control C, then I'm going to put my playhead where I want to paste this, and I'm going to go control V. <laughs> and it pasted it where my mouse was because I had this set to mouse. Okay, I'm going to go control Z, and I'm going to change this to playhead. This is my edit point. So I had to have my playhead, my edit point set to playhead. So then it's going to paste where my playhead is. Now I have my mouse, whatever, control V, and I have this pasted on my playhead. Now I can do this as many times as I want. And this copies the automation and, and I can just, you know, have everything sounding the same. I, I love working with synthesizers and like, you know, keeping all my MIDI data and my automation and just making it, you know, making it editable at any level. Like, I don't really like resampling synthesizers because to, to do any change, I would need to change the patch, resample it again, and it's a destructive process. And I would like, I like to avoid destructive processes as much as possible in my workflow so, so it's easier to do changes at any level whatever I did this. All right. I wanted a pad. I'm going to add a pad. I, I want some chords to, to do with this, to go with that. So I'm going to just, yeah. Maybe let's uh, try, try our sweet keyboard to do the pad. Um, mm, oh, is my MIDI keyboard not detected? Yeah, okay, I, I had to run my MIDI bridge. Working it is, isn't, all right. I'm gonna first make a very, very simple um, patch. I'm going to use, maybe, maybe use, maybe pad synth, yeah. Let's go with pad synth. I need to apply. Let's go with a saw, or maybe with a square. I can make it lower. Ah. Hmm, what is this? Oh, anti pop. Interesting. Alrighty. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Where is, where's my main width? I have finally found it. There it is. sounds hollow and that is exactly what square waves do. They sound hollow because they have every other harmonic instead of every single one like a saw wave. And these sounds are these waveforms are produced by things like flutes by com because of complicated processes, physical processes happening inside with the air going back and forth and compressing and doing things. Um, 
maybe give it a slower attack. Uh, another release. Could be. Uh, I really would like to mess up this spectrum. It's a bit dull. Interesting. Let's do some crazy stuff to it and see. Okay. Interesting. Let's let's add a bunch of reverb to this. Maybe add some phaser. Very, very subtle. And then we can also add a chorus. Randomize the LFO. Make it subtle. Okay. Let's see what we can do with that. I think I have it. Um, using keys three and four, I can on the numpad. No, sorry, on the alphanumeric keyboard, I can change between the grid settings. So I can, you know, without moving my mouse from the piano roll, I can change these, which is very convenient. Oh, this is too loud. All right, now it's too quiet, I can hear. I would like to go an octave higher for the last Right, let's duplicate this, Alt D. I would like to do something like have a maybe a bandpass filter after this. Uh, so I'm gonna use call filter. Yeah, let's use a no no no, I should use a wider bandpass. Or maybe not. Let's go with 18 decibels by octave and see what, what we get. I'm gonna change the inertia to be small. So I have the sharpest automation responsiveness because I want to use automation for that, for the frequency. Let's see what go what we get. I will probably have a linear scale, so it's gonna be a little bit of pain to Yeah, I, ah. Or maybe not. Let's see. Oh, I think it's logarithmic. I think they are fixed this in the version, new in the new version. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see. Makes me want to add a uh, octaver or something. Let's see what we can get. Uh, uh, I think I got something from Guitarix. This is weird. I see very little plugins here. Why? Okay. 
gx hello show me everything guitarix there was an octaver um somewhere i'm sure oh yeah no not not detune pitch shifter yay guitarix guitarix octave let's see oh it's not managing <laughs> I also think it's trying to add sub octaves <laughs> instead of uh, octaves. Alrighty. Um, okay, I think I can use auto tune for that or auto talent because it basically has pitch shifting and mix controls. Yeah. No correction. Pitch shift. 0.5. <laughs> I think it's not what I wanted. All right, it doesn't do what I want. It's strange. Okay, I'm gonna give it up for now. It's a bit quiet, I need to bump it up. I think I need a kick drum for this that will thicken it up, add some gro groove, because we have very, <laughs> we have absolutely no percussion right now. Let's see. Oh, that's going to be too, too sparse. Yeah. I'm just going to cut this G. Ah, all right. I have edit point at playhead, so now I need to move it to mouse so I can cut with my mouse. Um, right. I'm gonna maybe loop this for for now. Ah, all right. Something badly loops. Let's see. Okay, that's better. Let's make our kick. <laughs> So first voice, let's do voice frequency envelope. Amplitude, amplitude, global amplitude. Let's add another voice, which is going to be. Uh, I'm gonna start stop this because there was a bug that crushed the nuts of effects when you enabled modulation during a note playing. I want to make a really messed up sound, so I'm just gonna do some pretty random oscillator. A pretty random modulating oscillator and modulate the heck out of that. So here's my amplitude. This is the amount of modulation. Sweet! Now I can. Yeah, I can just now clamp this with my amplitude envelope.
and it's a lovely little click for my kick. Maybe it's a bit too loud. Maybe not. Okay. Let's go to effects and put in a distortion because it makes everything better. Sure, we don't want so much of it. Yeah, parallel distortion is very nice. I'm going to add a resonant high pass filter, make it sharper. <laughs> Alrighty. I think that's that's enough. Let's maybe add a high shell filter so I can accentuate the click a bit. But not too much. All right, I'm gonna just compress this kick quickly. To accentuate the attack. Uh, it's pretty hard. Without compression, with compression. Nice. Me likey. Let's see. All right. Let's duplicate it. I'm going to go Shift D, Type 7. So we have all eight. There we go. We need a hi hat to go in here. You can feel the groove. Oh. Age, age. I'm going just. Duplicate my kick. Okay, we can make it smaller right now. I'm going to go E for edit mode. I'm going to offset this by... Oh, okay, I need more precision. So I'm going to go 3. So I have beats by 2. Because I need to offset this by half a beat. I can also make it shorter. And now it's going to be... Yeah, now let's make this a hi-hat. Let's loop this. We can also listen to the kick along so we can have an idea how the hi-hat is going to interact with our kick or maybe not maybe let's maybe let's silence the kick so we can focus on our uh where is the nuts of effects come on guy all right so hi-hats are very very nice there's a great uh way to make hi-hats from pulse waves but you need a lot of them. You can use modulation unison with no vibrato. So we have no change in pitch between these. So this is one. I'm gonna copy this. Hopefully I can paste it here. I do. Sweet. Now I'm gonna um, the tune, the second voice. Does it have the effect I want? Let's. Okay, because of the a lot of, because we have lots of the tune in the unison, it's not so easy to hear the effect. Okay, let's paste it one more time. Make the fourth one from scratch. Uh, voice, of course. And make it pan. Now let's copy this. Paste here. Now I am carefully trying to make it as detuned as possible. So it doesn't sound like a note.
All right, and that's our last voice. Maybe we could use this voice for some noise. So I'm gonna change this to a white noise. Pan it to center. You can also use modulation to make the noise stereo by having two copies of the noise uh, or two independent noise sources panned left and right. This is what the spread does. When I do this, they are going to be in the center and you can hear some phasing between them. Now they are left and right, so we have the wide stereo image. And now the magic happens because you might think, what the crap is this, dude? Now we go to the global filter and change it to a high pass. We make the resonance lower. And we do the amplitude envelope. And that's our hi-hat, basically. I think I can decrease the amount of detune in the unison for the first three voices. So we're gonna have some sharper sounding all right here it's pretty nice let's uh let's see how it plays on different octaves it's pretty cool let's add a bit of reverb make it very high in pitch by the way i can maximize this thingy oh sorry uh, in the plugin version um change of the scale of the window is not working properly because of the limitations of, I guess, LV2 or some problems with handling plugins. The standalone version beautifully scales to any resolution you want. Uh, this is initial delay, so I'm gonna decrease that. I also will add a an EQ to make um, to make a peak filter so I can accentuate something. Because I want to accentuate some Yeah, maybe not too much because it's gonna be painful at some point. And we don't want that, but I want it to be Quite prominent. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe add another low shelf. Make it sharper to cut the lows. Alright, let's listen. Should be good. Let's shift D3. So we have four copies total and listen. I think we could drop a bass right there. <laughs> maybe. Um, so, I don't know, maybe let's just duplicate everything we have and work from there. I'm gonna go free, press four, sorry, four, so I go to beats and then maybe bars. So a snap to bars, which is gonna help me. And I can select this. You can see when I drag, it doesn't select the automation tracks, so I need to select them separately on my own. I'm gonna go Control C, change this edit point to playhead, put my playhead where I wanna paste it. Oh, right, I have auto return. No, I have auto play enabled. Auto play, yeah, because I pressed five. Auto return two, I, I just pressed around the keys. Uh, yep, Control V, there you go. And I'm going to control drag the hi hats so we have them here as well. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I don't know, maybe add a, add a bass. Let's see. Okay, uh, maybe we could. 
put around some markers to know what we're doing where. I'm gonna just name each part A, B, and C. Oh. Yep, location markers. This is A, this is kind of an intro. This is gonna be, this is where the bass comes in, I think. Let's press free so I have more resolution to the beats. Let's listen. Listen to just the bass and the... Uh... Oh, sweet. I like it. Um, I'm probably gonna... Oh, okay. Sorry. I have my play, my edit point set to playhead and I still want to cut with my mouse, which is problematic. I'm gonna go sh Alt D. Da -da -da -da. Now I'm gonna edit this. Change the melody in the second part. All right, just one note, but it makes a difference. It makes it feel absolutely different, <laughs> which is just one extra note. You would say, what? Makes a difference. Small things matter. Okay, I'm gonna go press, uh, just consolidate range, so I have one region instead of two, so I, it's easier to copy and paste that around. Now I'm gonna um, create some um, sound design for this bass. Ah, okay, I'm gonna press, select this, press the right square bracket, I hit all L to loop around this selection. I'm gonna pause it to add modulation to my... Is there a phase offset for this? It's there. Oh yeah, there it is. I think the display is a bit broken for that full. I think we'll now play around with the depth of the modulation. Because that always makes it fun. I would also want to make the global filter go. Maybe I will make this global filter a high pass filter actually. Independent from the velocity. Frequency. So it's just a static high pass filter. So we can have a separate uh, sub bass oscillator. This is gonna be it. And our sub bass oscillator is going to bypass the global filter. gonna make our sound way fatter and we can mess up the middle and high frequencies on our first voice using modulation as much as we want without breaking our sub bass which is important I'm gonna actually also try to add some noise maybe maybe 
Ah, too much, too much. Maybe just on this first thingy. It's a bit silly. Maybe it would work well if we distorted this afterwards. Or if I enable filter. And go bait, then pass. I will leave it in. I'm just gonna make it very minute. Okay, I'm gonna learn the first voice modulation amplitude, this one. It's gonna, it's gonna give us a lot of fun. Learn. Now I have macro learn. Yep. I'm gonna call this PM. I pressed space and Ardor claimed this. All right, let's leave it at PM. Um, automation processors and so effects slot one. There's it. We can actually record this. Uh, but maybe not. I would be tempting to make some random, totally random stuff, and I just. I would like to design some sensible automation so it is musical. Ah, okay, we're going below any sensible level in here. Let's try it. Okay. How about this, sweetheart? Ah, uh, too much, too much here. Not not sounding nice. Sounding edgy and cold digital. Actually, I think we should mute these instruments when the bass comes in, because otherwise we're gonna have a whole lot of mess of stuff um, and nowhere to, like, put anything more, because it's gonna be just too much, so... I'm gonna just mute these for now. Alt 1 will add exclamation mark everywhere, and that means these regions are no more playing. Ah! We have stuck notes. Alrighty, ah, I duplicated this, but no automation. Because Duplicating uh, MIDI regions with Alt-D or Shift-D will not copy the automation. We need to do our re r range selection. So hit R or press here for range mode. Select this thingy. Then Control select automation, Control c Make sure you have either um, snapping two bars and the mouse on, and then I can just go here and wish for the best. It snapped to the bars, it's okay. So it should be fine. Yep, snapping, good. If you do this without snapping or you snap to two little increments and it's offset, uh, be careful because that can just, you know. It might be difficult to actually detect that it broke and, and yeah, it just, it doesn't sound right and you don't know why. I think we should just slightly, maybe, maybe slightly, maybe not, maybe not too much, but distort this thing afterwards together. Maybe add some reverb in the high frequency band. Let's see. High, so we have high pass filter engaged. Maybe small time. Big initial delay, so it's kind of a kind of an echo, kind of a diffuse echo. We could I don't know if, I don't know if we want to automate this. I don't think there's a need. Maybe I'm just gonna make it smaller because when I distort everything, whoa, it's gonna for sure make this lever more audible. Oh sweet. Huh. 
you want it like this. Actually, if we use some asymmetric distortion, it's kind of like a second layer of frequency modulation. I will actually automate this. Learn drive. It's gonna be very, very fun. Macro learn. Let's test it. Yep. Slot two is drive. Alrighty. I'll close it for now and play with the automation of the drive. Uh, we'll have to copy and paste it. Uh, oh, pff, all right. I don't put regions here, no. Um, I guess a, a little bit of movement, maybe, you know, kind of a, in a... You know, we have phrases, then we have metaphrases above the phrases, and we have metaphrases above the metaphrases. So it's like this is a small phrase that is repeated with an uh, with a with a different ver with a variation here, and this all is also a phrase. So this automation is repeating among along this phrase, and this automation is going to repeat about among this phrase uh, around, kind of you know working on different levels of the structure of the of the music. Okay, uh, it might work. I think I should make it um, a little bit more dry, wet. Let's see. Let's like, make it parallel. Oh, and make it stereo. Press this space. Hopefully to even out the loudness. Also make it a little bit less loud. Right, let's listen to the whole thing. to make a variation here so we have da -ba -da -da. something else something different I'm gonna hit e all right that should be Pretty sweet. Uh, how about changing the automation there to, to to accentuate the difference? Maybe make something like that. Ah, oh, sweet! <laughs> oh, that's a lucky accident. <laughs> there are no mistakes there. Only happy accidents. Bob Ross. Oh, I'm gonna remove this point because it's just hanging there with no for no reason. This one too. You gonna save? Kind of a I don't know this some houseish thing. Makes me want to bounce. Would work great on a dance floor, I guess. I think there is a little bit too much high frequencies in this bass track, and it is. Oh, a little bit too prominent. I know I just made it quite bright and full of 
frequency content, but it's uh, feels like it's too much. Let's just turn it down a bit, the high frequencies. Oh, that's a lovely spectrum. You see our sweet. I'm gonna enable. See how our lovely harmonics are dancing because of the frequency modulation and, and the asymmetric distortion. Sweet thing. Uh, hmm. I also think we should have more hi hats. Uh, or other rhythmic percussive elements because um, we need to build up the groove and this is just a kick in the hi-hat it's, it's very 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 sparse um, and I, I think I feel like I want to add something to that so I'm gonna I'm gonna try add another hi-hat gonna maybe, maybe I'm gonna loop I'm gonna just yeah loop one phrase maybe without muting anything just yeah, just just work on that. Oh, please don't do that again. Oh. Oh, 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 we're gonna make something melodic. Not hi-hat this time. Oh, sweet. Let's go make this region consolidate range. Sorry, consolidate, consolidate range. I wanna make something, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know, ah, uh, I like it. Excited. All right, so this is not, I'm gonna call this pluck, whatever it's gonna be. Whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be called pluck. Doesn't matter. Modulation. I want to. I want to mess this up. Mess this up badly. <laughs> oh, you see, we have uh, uh, <laughs> we have another instance of the net sub effects uh, triggering this uh, for the GUI. It's not actually happening for the engine. I, I mentioned this bug, and Mark McCurry is knowing about it. Harder to set the value you want. Oh, I like this so. There's 
there's something... Now this pitch doesn't work very well. Let's ch try moving it up. Shift Alt, up arrow, shift it one octave up. Oh, doesn't sound better at all. How about making it shorter? Could work, definitely could work. I'm gonna Alt D this maybe. Yeah, let's all let's copy this. I know what I'm gonna do. Because we, we shouldn't drop this. We shouldn't drop. This is a new element, and this is a new element. Look what happens if we just play this. Excuse me. There's too much thing happening at the same time. People should not be overwhelmed, and this is overwhelming, so we should... In in, uh, I, I would introduce the bass, but then introduce this over time with a filter. Of course, what else would you want to do? Filter, filter sweep. Ah, uh, let's see what it can do. We can use the internal one. Let's. Uh, this isn't going to work. Oh, this is also automation reading from another process, but it's not doing anything. Okay, let's use that. I'm gonna go learn, uh, macro learn, test it out. Okay, works. Let's call this cut off. Add automation track for the plugin soft one. Make it play. Play the thing. And we're going to slowly introduce it. Let's see. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Wh wh wow, why? It shouldn't start right off. What what's going on? Uh maybe I should I don't know. Maybe I should I guess uh, let's try. Okay, that's better. Uh looks like we have a very, very strange range. That should be good. It will introduce it over time without overwhelming the listener. Control S. I think we're still introducing it too early. I'm gonna move this down. People's gonna be just, whoa, what's going on? Whoa, wow, wow. Why so much stuff? I will also. I want to distort it. Yeah, I just want to distort it. Let's go select these, maybe. Also, I want to high pass this thingy. It shouldn't have any low frequencies because that's gonna damage our bass. Now 
Now it's better. You can see we don't have the low frequency click when the automation snapped back and the filter went all the way down. And naturally, it was a very fast move, so it had to generate an impulse. And that impulse had, you know, it, it, impulses are wide frequency, it, so we have every frequency. Uh, and we could hear the bass frequencies there. And we don't want that. Now it doesn't happen when we have filtered out the low frequencies. It's there, but it's very, very silent and quiet. Maybe I should introduce it slightly earlier. Okay, I think we should just duplicate this part um, and build on it. So I will select the range with bar snapping. Are we good? We are good. Now, control. Whoa, I changed the mode of this to touch. No, I don't want it. Control, 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 click. Yay. Oh, we have these delete disabled. I uh, Maybe I don't need to duplicate them. I will. Whatever. No big deal. All right, we have everything. Control C. Now mouse. We're snapping the bars, so putting my mouse here and pressing Control V should do the thing. It did the thing. Wonderful. Now, how about bringing back our sweet little ARP? Uh, I think we should mark this as part C. Just to, you know, know where we are. You know, it's like uh, eight bar uh, segment blocks. Eight bars from B to C, eight bars from A to B, right, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. <laughs> can count. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sheesh. Ah, uh, but the pads, no, the pads shouldn't go. Or maybe the, uh, I don't know. Oh, looks like. Looks like they were unmuted because we copied them. Weird. We still need a second high, you know. We should add a... We need something like that. It nicely plays. The, the, the ARP comes in and it makes it feel good. Feel developing. Feel nicey. Sweet and full. Alrighty. Um, I want to develop a really um, rich hi-hat part for this thing. Maybe I'm going to just first do a very basic one. Then make my sound design... And then go back and... Ah, no, no, no. Uh, this one. Yeah, I'm just gonna make my sweet little hi-hat. Let's go with a different approach. I'm gonna use pad synth this time. Because pad synth do, do great stuff. I'm gonna use a pulse wave. Make it weird. Distort it. In a friggin' sweet owl way. Oh man, this ah oh, no, I need I need something else. Oh yeah. Cool. Make it uh filtered with sin sign filter, which is weird, which is good. Now I'm gonna make this inharmonic. So let's do do stuff. Mm, harmonic? No, inharmonic. Let's do sign shift. Uh, yeah, so it displaces our harmonics of sine function. That's gonna make them nice and inharmonic. I'm going to also... This is the single harmonic profile. So I'm going to introduce some weirdness. 
make it more, make more of itself, and make it. Hmm. I think I'm missing some some stuff. Alrighty. Cool. Now let's um maybe let's make it wider. I turn this filter into a high pass because it's a low pass by default. Maybe we should make the frequency lower. Oh yeah. And now I could add a hmm amplitude, add a click with strength. Can you hear the click? We have a sweet click. And then we will make this decay. And we can decay slowly. So we can make an open hi-hat sound as well as a closed hi-hat sound. If we just release the note, make it shorter and it will release right there. So it gives us more options. The click might be a bit brutal. Right. I think I'd, I could also add some tad of noise. Just add some random harmonics with no fundamental because it's going to make them sound like a tone, like a, like a note, and I want that. Make it wider. Make it uh, inharmonic. Shift U. Sweet! Sounds metallic as crap. And the same thing applies. Um, we need a envelope that's going to decay, but long. And how to make this a bit more delicate. Yeah, it adds another layer of hi hat ishness for our hi hat, which will make it more hi hat y, which is good. Also, always add more hi hat ishness if you can. Makes things better if you're making hi hats, of course. Now let's just add a bit of reverb. Not so much. Yeah, let's just make it feel like it's in a space. Um, not, I mean, in a room, not just flying in vacuum, because vacuum makes no sound. Let's hype as this. And now we can accentuate also some, some particular frequencies that we like. Oh, that's that's a lot. Or dampen some that we don't like. like this, like in it. You see, without this single harmonic, it feels completely different. Look, I'm going to make this off. Huge difference. <laughs> Absolutely s funny. <laughs> like, alrighty, now let's make our uh, part. But first I need a, a little bit of a break. Okay, I'm back. Making a second hi-hat. Let's hear the thing. Oh, that sounds so sweet. <laughs> I like it. But I want to fill it up with more stuff. I, oh, I like the t timbre of this hi-hat so much. Wow. I want to 
to make very, very short little... Whoa, what did I do? What did I do? Oh, C is MIDI channels. MIDI channel chooser. Yay. Okay, I can put a note on a different channel. Right, now it's a channel two. This one is channel one. Oh, sweet. And you have this at, mm, <laughs> under the key C on your keyboard, which is very convenient. Convenience is also starting with C. Cute! Combustible lemonade. Just discovered something. <laughs> Trying to teach you stuff I learned on, on also. I think I need to add a longer release because these are feeling so stuttery. I think I need to play with velocity because otherwise it's gonna be dull and boring. Okay, I'm gonna make these just with the mouse wheel. Uh, I think I also want to make my grid even more. Beats by eight, I want it more. Yeah, beats by eight. Gorgeous! Shift D, make free copies and play it. Just play it, play the f out of it. Uh, I think it is a little bit too loud. However, we could um, equalize it so it is it has even more emphasis on emphasis on the high frequencies because they are hard to hear. Even though we already have boosted them, but in the mix they disappear. Oh. So, so serene and laid back and, oh man, so, so sweet, so, so delightful. I want to make a pre-noise, like a riser here. Uh, I would go with a noise-based one. Let's see what we can make. I am tempted to make a super saw-based one, but it, I don't know if it's going to fit in the style of this track. So let's try with the with the simple noise one. I think I'm gonna yeah enable keyboard input so I can easily just try it out without 
stopping and, and starting again the transport because that's gonna make it hard to really do the thing I want to do. Let's make this white noise. Make it stereo. Hear a difference? If not, you're streaming in 270p. And that is not how it's supposed to be in 2018. Lad. Now, we're gonna do a, a good old filter sweep. Okay, what am I doing? Ah, right, we also have... Let's bypass the global filter. Let's do this with automation, because I normally do this with envelopes, and then just put one note and I'm, I'm done, but... Automation is going to give us way more control. I know it's going to be a bit more cumbersome, but... Well... Let's do it. Learn, wiggle, wiggly, un unclicking, macro learn, pressing, testing it out. Works! Sweet. Cut off. Whoa! Not this. Yeah, not righty. All right, uh, okay, all right. Automation, slot one. Now we have this here. We can do stuff. Can do things. Ah, uh, I know. We might have trouble getting the right... I'm gonna increase my grid to beats. I don't need beats by four or eight. Let's do this play and listen. Okay. Uh, the same thing. We are way too high. Okay, I will. I will change the um, the offset and the gain. So we have more resolution in the low frequency. Let's see what it is now. Still very much usable. Actually, we're starting like right there. Let's try to do this like this. What are we gonna get? Very simple, but effective. Pre-noise, I will call this. Could be called a riser or something. I think we need to add some... I don't know, maybe reverb? Let's try... Or, let's mess it up with MA Pitch Shift, because it is a awesome plugin that does very weird things to sounds. Uh, but we need to change the routing. I'm going to make this, yeah, each instance is going to be its own output. Let's do it. Let's loop that thing and solo it. I'm going to enable MA pitch shift ratio. It's a pitch shifter that gives you control over... various things. Like the window size. Oh! What's going on? Oh, we have everything. All right. Uh, somehow I have created automation slots for everything. But that's no problem. We're going to make automation that we need, and then we're going to remove automation lanes that do not contain any automation. So we will clean this up. Autom pitch shift window. This is like the buffer size for the pitch shifter, which makes things very funky if you make it small. Let's just hear it. Yep, this is why I like MA pitch shift. Okay, I think I'm not gonna be doing any more. So let's go. Whoa, what I did? What did? Whoa, wow. What, whoa, where am I? What's happening? G. Okay. Um, pre noise. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
right click automation show okay hide all automation and then show ex existing automation now we just have a tracks that actually contain any data oh this one doesn't why is it here let's just clear it and hide it Alrighty, it makes it more interesting. It makes it less, a little bit less generic and simple, which I like. Uh, so, well, when we want to copy this, we need to copy it with region, sorry, with range selection, so everything is copied along. Mm -hmm. Let's listen and think what can we add in this session. Ah, oh, yeah. I could make this kick less frequent in the first part. I don't know if it's a good idea. I'm just going to try it out. Shift D, free. There you go. Ah, oh, no, it doesn't feel well. Let's control Z this thing. Okay. But I want to do something. It's very. I want to automate a Lopez filter over this kick so it doesn't kick so brightly at the start because it is very, very bright. I don't like that. So let's go A, automation, call filter, frequency, play. And now I'm going to start with a Lopez filter at maybe 500 hertz. Then let's go to hmm, all the way and halfway through. I want to be at thousand, then I want to be at thousand like this. I yeah, let's see. Oh, much better. But I want to lower this even more and see how that sounds. How about adding some variation to this hi-hat? Can we do this? Oh, wow, I pressed C, uh, S for split instead of D, I want a D. Um, my grid is set to beats. I want my grid to be set to beats by eight. Let's try adding some very short notes. Let's see what it does. Oh, sweet. I would like to make them I'm going to press E to edit so I can select with dragging and then just make them quieter by using my mouse wheel. I don't like that this note is very short. It's it's sounding weird like it's being Maybe it just needs to be louder too better. I would also want to maybe shorten these notes before so there is kind of a build up to that to that to that um break. Wow. Uh, I don't know if it's oh uh, I don't know if it's gonna sound good. Not super sure but let's try it. And we can also do the same thing there. Very nice. I would like to add a crash symbol, I guess. We have eight tracks. I need to add more tracks. Okay, let's add four. Now let's add two more. If we need more, we're going to add more. 
I'm gonna add a crash symbol because there is a need for one. Here. Definitely. Uh, maybe I'm just gonna enable my keyboard input so I can try it out very, very quickly. And well, let's just use everything we can, which is pad synth. It's great for such stuff. Let's do the, a similar thing that we used for um, apps, ABS sign. I like this one. Oh, we could use discrete. It's gonna make it very, very weird. So let's mess up our oscillator because uh, we need it messed up to make good things. Oh, that's interesting. Adaptive harmonics. That adds uh, octaves to our soundy, which could be, could be good, could be bad. Modulation. I think we have super big amounts of high frequency content, which is good, because we're gonna turn it into pure gold. I'm gonna go shift L, which will shift our. Oh, what? Why that spectrum is so limited? I want more. That sounds like a dubstep screaming sound, I know. Could be. Yeah, something's not right. Oh, bandwidth isn't gonna do anything in the discrete mode, which only creates pure tones on the harmonic points and no width whatsoever. It's like, I think it's like using bandwidth with zero bandwidth. Even 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 more, even less bandwidth than that. So let's maybe not go that route. I'm going to try. Envelopes and LFOs. Let's go one octave down and make our filter a high pass. Oh, that's bright. Let's uh, make it decay, uh, but the amplitude. We want the amplitude to decay. Cool. Sounds like a crash. Could be. Now let's disable force re release so we it I can release the key and it still plays the decays um the decay part of the envelope it's not jumping to the release part if I have force release it jumps to release stage er whenever I release the key, which is not what I want here, because I just want to trigger this and have it play out the whole thing until at the end. Alrighty, we need more layers. Let's do whatever we can to make it as messy and interesting as possible. So, make this in harmonic, please. Let's go with sign. Cool. Make it more bandwidth. Uh, make the filter filter. Make the filter a high pass. Oh, enable it. <laughs> that sounds like some hum from a pipe. Not exactly what we want. Maybe let's change the octave. This could be better, but we need definitely we need the envelope to decay. Let's disable this. It does fill in the spectrum, so that's good. We need more. It all it already sounds kinda like a thingy we want. 
Let's do crazy amounts of detune on this. I want even more. How can I get more? Voc voice list. Vib. Maybe it's not present in Zenfusion yet. For the record, I have found that in the global frequency we have bandwidth. And we can use that to scale the unison detune and any other detune options way, way further apart. So back to the main dish. But it should do the job. I'm just gonna mess up this waveform. Let's go with maybe asymmetric too. We could do modulation. Ring modulation. Who's gonna stop us? Nobody. It is weirdly not doing what I think it would. Is it ringing? Ah, oh, maybe it has velocity sensing. Uh, I think I need to detune it. Does it do anything? Let's disable all their voices. Phase modulation is doing things. Oh, but it's still. Maybe it's the global filter. Let's go with no sensing. And again, I forget that to disable the velocity sensing, I need to turn it all the way up, not all the way down. Here's my mistake. And the voice, no sensing. On the filter, no sensing on the amplitude. Right? It's all wrong. Go with ring. Oh, it's quiet, why? Oh, it's all wrong. Uh, it's all wrong. Whew, not what I wanted. Ah, I should turn it all the way up, not down. That's the thing. Okay. It doesn't do much. I expected it to do more. What's going on? Oh. There we go. This does way more things. Oh, like, I don't know if we can use it in an envelope. If that's gonna do a good job. Maybe to some degree. I need to have the amplitude envelope decay. Now, if we high pass the thing, Shouldn't be so bad, right? Sounds like a crash. Yeah, I know, we could EQ this. I'm gonna EQ it. Let's go... Maybe add some reverb first. Oh, the secret weapon. The random reverb. I'm gonna go all wet, and you can hear what it does. It's amazing. You set the the room size to very small, and it creates random resonances, creating like it just simulates a a, a metal part resonating. <laughs> it's fantastic. The bigger the size, the bigger the part. It's super great. 
Let's add another layer of reverb onto that, which is a like a regular reverb. And then use EQ to sculpt the thingy. I'm gonna go with high pass first. Maybe cut off some nasty lows. Uh, add a peak. Ah, sorry, peak. Yeah, the upper mids kind of add weight to the thing and make it feel like a real brass cone. Not just like a simulation of one. Now this is nasty. It's a pity. Because I need some high stuff. Maybe I can boost this. I think I can. Let's go with that. Alrighty, um, I'm gonna just put a note here. <laughs> different pitch. Different pitch, different sound. What note am I playing? I think this one. Okay, let's hear it in the context. Doing its job! I think we could compress it to make it last longer. So we will attenuate this, the first part of the sound that is the loudest one, and we will slowly release to make it feel like it's, it's a longer sound. I'm gonna make this one stay on top because I'm gonna be... Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. I'm gonna just do auto return, and I'm gonna go... Yeah, now I can just stop the playback with pa with spacebar and press it again and re restart the part. And I don't have to click away from my plugin, which would hide its window because I'm in the full screen mode. Oh yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to do. And it does it. Let's just add some makeup gain. Oh, not. Let's not do that. Let's instead just rise this level. Very nice. Very long, soothing decay. Okay, we are approaching two hour mark. Ah, uh, not really. 1.30 probably when I cut it down. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope this shows you how you can make electronic compositions with synthesis inside Ardor, because many people think that Ardor is only good for recording music when you have this. And it's no good when you just have this synthesizers, but it is. It is good, it does have some non-standard ideas in it, but it's absolutely usable, it, it works, uh, and I love it. And the session will be available for download, so if you have Ardor, this is version 5.12, working backwards, so you can download the demo for free from ardor.org, or pitch in $1 a month via PayPal, recurring uh, subscription and just download the full version. Or if you're on Linux, you can download it from KX Studio repositories. I'm gonna maybe link a video where I explain that in the notes. Yeah, just play along. Fix, um, remix this, make uh, your own version, build it up, break it apart, make replace the sounds, learn from it, do stuff. If you have any questions, 
or suggestions for future videos, please be kind and leave them in the comments. I will also greatly appreciate any feedback on what I should do, what I shouldn't do, what I can improve, what I messed up. I'm trying my best. Also, big thanks go to my Patreon supporters who bring in money every month. It's, it's amazing that you guys are there and you want to support this. I have a notion of a mission in the open source musicianship community. I feel like what I'm doing is very much needed and our community needs artists and our community needs to find out what amazing software there is that is open source and everyone can get it and make music, make great music. It's not a toy, this is serious stuff and you can do serious work with it and I want to let the world know. But I need your help because uh, I need to eat. If you think I should continue on this quest, consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. So, well, download the session, the link is in the description, uh, leave your comments. Uh, also, spread the word. Let this video be on your Facebook wall or whatever. Tweet it. Uh, let people know. I don't know. Yeah, just let's make this thing explode. <laughs> All right, one more time. I messed it up. <laughs> it's all wrong.